because there's one game that stands out like a a sore thumb, and that would be the four and seven Browns as they pay a visit to Houston for a date with the one nine and one Texans. Now that is not going to win a beauty contest, and I think you know why that game is getting the buzz, <clears throat> the buzz. But maybe not. Maybe you have lived in a cave and you have not been paying attention. So let me let me kind of fill in the blanks here. Uh, it's all about the subplot. Because if the Browns and Texans were to play on a regular Sunday, you wouldn't pay any attention to it. But if you tossed in the fact that Deshaun Watson, the creepy quarterback, is going to be making his regular season Browns debut after the NFL gave him a sweetheart deal, now, now you got something, right? Now you got a little something, right? And so we have learned that not only will Deshaun Watson be under center for the Cleveland football team this weekend, but he will be greeted by a gaggle of ladies to whom he paid hush money to. That's right. Tony Busby is back. On our sonar, the well-known attorney based in Houston, Tony Busby, has announced that about 10 of the women who have accused Watson of being a pervert, and by the way, Watson, he paid him off, so he must agree he is a pervert, and uh, they accused him of assaulting them during massages and all that stuff. Watson had said, I'm not paying anybody off, not paying anybody off, then he paid him off. Not all of them, though, but... Most of them have been given a check to go away, but they're not going away. They're not going away. They will be there in the big stadium in Houston on Sunday. So let us discuss the question. It's a very simple question. Why? Why are there going to be a group of 10 women, uh, the women that have accused Deshaun Watson there and got paid? Why are they going to be showing up to his return to the NFL. So my observations, I've got highway billboard, soundtrack, and George Lucas. And we will combine all of these things together, and we are going to make some oversized cowboy boots, which I think Tony Busby wears, but I'm not sure. So number one. Number one. Number one. There are some in the media business that are spinning this as a victim power. You know, we're going to stand up to Deshaun Watson. I'm not buying that, though. I don't believe that that is what this story is about. I know some are trying to manipulate this 10 of the women who accused Watson showing up to the game. It's all about victim power. I don't believe it. Right? I, these women took a check. with their, their right to do it. They wanted the money. They got the money. And that's it. Only one, I think it's actually two now. I think there's two accusers who are going to play the long game. All right, they're going to play it out in civil court. But everyone else took a deal. We got a deal. And so the the people that are going forward, the the two people, if they they do go all the way through the, the process, then it's a different animal. But the simple answer here as to why there will be a flock of women who accused Watson, took a check, why they are going to show up there, the uh, the answer is staring you right between the eyes, right? right? It, it's very simple. Uh, they were invited, okay? You don't have to go any deeper than that. It's not more complex than that. Tony Busby has a luxury box at the Texans game on Sunday. I think he has one for all the games. And Busby, the attorney, never misses an opportunity. He's got a little bit of Don King, Vince McMahon, P.T. Barnum. He's a hype man. He's a showman. And so if you're Tony Busby, the attorney, this has been a wonderful mitzvah for you, this story. Great story for you. And it's what you live for. It's what you went to law school for if you're Tony Busby. And so you either spend a wad of cash on more highway billboards or or you have one of your underlings, one of your secretaries, type up a press release, and it's, hey, work smarter, not harder. It's a great publicity stunt. Busby is one of the wonderful ambulance-chasing lawyers that we have, and you wonder how much are some of these people worth. 
Busby has a net worth of $700 million. $700 million. He has won some of the biggest cases in the state of Texas in, as far as payouts and settlements over his time in litigation. Now, as for the massage therapist, this NRG stadium where the Texans play, it holds roughly 72,000 people, give or take. So I'm pretty sure that you and I would have no clue who is there and who's not there at this game, nor would we really give a rat's ass who's at the game or not. Uh, you know, it's a big stadium, unless you get shown on television, how are you going to know? Uh, and so now we know. Now we know. It's a story, and it helps bring more attention to Tony Busby because there'll be another Deshaun Watson down the line. Might not be a quarterback. Maybe it's a basketball player, a baseball player, or God only knows what. But somebody who's in the spotlight who will play touchy-feely and uh, play hide the sausage and, and, and all that, and then they'll get in trouble for it, and then they'll call Tony Busby, and Busby will say, okay, I can make more money. But in terms of both – Notoriety and monetary gain, this has been a bonanza. It has been a bonanza. Now, page two. What is it going to be like? What's it going to be like for Deshaun Watson this weekend? And we mentioned earlier, under the big top, come one, come all. That's what this is, right? Fun for all ages. Well, maybe not all ages, but you got to pull up a chair here. The circus is coming to town. And I'm talking old school. I'm talking elephants and lions and bears, like a real old school before before the circuses became just flying trapeze artists. Back when circuses had all kinds of animals, got rid of that. Right? Can't can't do that anymore in polite society. Uh, and, and the soundtrack for this game should be the Benny Hill theme song. All right, the Benny Hill theme song. Because uh, just keeping it real here, there's no tangible reason to watch the Browns and Texans. Again, for those of you in the back of the room, the Browns blow. Okay, they, they're terrible. And the Texans are an abomination. They're wicked bad. People stand spellbound, though. That's the sound when Watson runs out on the field. That's where they should be playing. The Benny Hill feet, right? People, they spell, they're, they're, they're spellbound with amazement watching the creepy quarterback. It is a jamboree for those looking to rock the boat. And for everyone else, we're all bystanders. We're rubberneckers. I'll be a rubbernecker. And I have gambling interests and whatnot with Benny and the Benny versus the Penny, but I will be checking this game out. I'll be flipping over to this game. I'll be navel gazing like everyone else. It's navel gazing on steroids, is what it is. All right, final point. So, how is this going to play out going forward for the Browns? Looking into Benny's crystal ball, we know that what they did, they, they chose to go down this path. They made a bed out of really thick nails, right? Really thick nails. And now the Cleveland football team can enjoy sleeping on that bed, and they don't care. They think they're the smartest people in the NFL. And they're going to ride this wave all the way to the Super Bowl. And any publicity is good publicity. And, and in reality, Deshaun Watson is good for the bottom line. He's putting fannies in seats. Granted, the people are showing up so they can attack Deshaun Watson and the Cleveland Browns. And the, the team was so turned on to get a quarterback that they paid a premium price. They sent a bunch of draft picks, which I don't care about. F them picks. But for this guy, and then to pay the guy, I, may we all pray that Deshaun Watson on the field is Russell Wilson 2.0. Can we can we have that happen? Can this be as spectacular a debacle as Russell Wilson in the Mile High City? And it would be even bigger because you can say what you want about Russell Wilson, but he doesn't have the baggage. His baggage is he's he's a nerd. He's Poindexter. That's his baggage. But Deshaun Watson, he's got a whole new level. Like crank it up a couple notches. Two hundred thirty million guarantee. The spirit animal of the twenty twenty two Browns and the twenty twenty three and twenty twenty four Browns. And as long as Watson's around, the spirit animal triumph 
the insult comic dog because everywhere the Browns go, the fans are going to be all lathered up. Now it's going to be special, a special lather in Houston this weekend. And Watson is the guy that broke the Texans back, that they were going the wrong direction, but Deshaun Watson expedited the process by demanding to be traded, right? Before he became known as a scumbag, he wanted out. He th- th- One of the most amazing scenarios in my life, I've been doing this a long time, and a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of years we've been doing this, and star athletes have asked for a trade. It's a common practice. And never before had someone in the middle of demanding a trade been accused by three dozen women, essentially, of, uh, hey, hey, uh, this guy did some bad stuff. And then they still get traded. And they get the contract. That had never happened before. This is uncharted territory, what's going on. But Watson seen as the person responsible for the, for the Texans breaking apart and all that in the middle of this. And so it's like George Lucas would say, the, the Browns traveling party is the pigskin version of the galactic empire, the evil empire. Deshaun Watson is old school Darth Vader. He's living in the Death Star. And all of his teammates, every single player who was a star in high school and a star in college to get to the NFL, they are now branded. They are around Deshaun Watson, and they've got stank on them. Collateral damage from being on the same team with Deshaun Watson. You say, it's not fair, it's not right. That's reality, right? That's reality. It's going to follow Watson around. And as we said, collateral damage, all of his teammates there, anyone associated with the Cleveland Browns, the rest of his time in Cleveland, wherever Watson goes, it'll follow him. Let's say this doesn't work out, and the Browns say, we got to get rid of Watson. We'll trade him to the New Orleans Saints, who wanted Watson before. It follows Watson to the bayou, the menace of the NFL now, the good news is, and I'll be Benny Brightside, Watson can afford noise-canceling headphones, and most of us would make that transaction to be hated at work for $230 million guaranteed. We'd all make that deal, right? we make that deal. And uh, Watson, he's, he's still got those two outstanding civil lawsuits and I cannot wait for that to play out after the season because that's going to be even uh, new revelations and and uh, and more dirt, mud, slinging mud uh, will happen yet again. 